It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. Well, the two teams you're about to meet are here for the second time. They've won their first round, and the winner of today's game moves on to take on Ridgecrest in the semifinal eliminations as we get closer and closer to the end of our 35th year of Science Bowl and the first time ever we've done our program on Zoom, all because of the pandemic. I'm in the studio. All of our students are safe in their homes. And we've kept some things the same, the same categories as we've always had on our science ball. But we have no buzzers. We don't have that kind of competition. Each team will be getting 18 questions, different but of comparable difficulty. And the team that uh, is in the lead when we finish here will be the winner of this game, and they'll move on in our competition. Something we have kept the same, all of our students, because they look so good and because they're so smart, we give them 50 points just for walking in the door, and in this case, sitting in their homes. All right, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with our program, here are the six categories of questions that we use. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. It is now time to meet the first of our two teams playing today. They are from Beacon Heights Elementary School. And please say hello to Sulma. Hey, Sulma. Wave to everybody at home. She's a wonderful player. Anna. Anna is out there, too. Anna is a, she's a great player. She was here with us last year, too, and she has really proven how much science she knows. And knowing a lot about science, where do you see Victoria? Hey, Victoria. Victoria knows her stuff, too. She really keeps up on science in the news and science history. All right. If you are ready, Beacon Heights, let's begin this playoff match. Let's start with green things and your five-point question. You get a five, a 15, and a 25. Here's the five-point question. Bushes and shrubs are different from trees in having separate branches or stems coming out of the ground rather than just one of these that a tree has. Okay, let's take a moment to discuss this. Uh, Victoria, what do you think? Maybe like leaves? Uh, could you repeat that, please? Limbs? Uh, okay, Anna, what do you think? I'm not very sure. Can you please repeat the question? Bushes and shrubs, they're different from trees because bushes and shrubs have separate branches or stems coming out of the ground, whereas a tree has just one of these. I think it's a trunk. Anna says trunk, and I heard limbs from Victoria. And Sulma, yeah. what do you want to go with, that or something else? Um, we can go with limbs. Okay. Anna actually had the right answer there. A tree has a trunk. One single trunk is typical of a tree. Let's go to the 15-point question. Nice work there, Anna. If a plant in your house, some of you have house plants. Some of you have green thumbs and you're better at it than others. If a plant in your house doesn't get enough light or enough iron and magnesium from the soil, it will come down. It gets sick. It gets a case of chlorosis. It turns yellow, telling you it's not making enough of this substance. Okay, Victoria, what do you think? Laura. I think, I think it's chlorophyll. I think it's chlorophyll that makes a plant all green. You got that right, Anna. It is indeed chlorophyll that is missing, which is why it has that sickly yellow look. Excellent. Let's get all three of these. Here's the third one in the green things category worth 25 points. This L, like in Larry, 
this L initial substance that is produced by some trees like rubber trees often causes an allergic reaction in people, especially if they wear rubber gloves. What is that L initial sap that comes out of rubber trees that some people are allergic to? Begins with the letter okay. L. Um, it's, it's her, what do you think? Oh, I don't have an answer. Either. Anna, what do you think it is? I'm not very sure. I don't know any actual words that have to do with a tree. Um, the name of this substance is called latex. L A T E X. And a lot of people, they can't wear latex gloves. It comes from rubber trees because they break out in a rash. Let's go to the zoo. A dentist in Australia was able to design a prosthesis, which is an artificial limb, for one of these cuddly marsupials who was born without a foot and found it hard to reach the eucalyptus leaves it loves to eat. Okay, Victoria? I was going to say the koala. It is a koala. Yes, you're all in agreement on that. Nice answer. Five more points. Here's a picture for you for the 15-point question in the zoo parade category. Scientists have succeeded in cloning this mammal, the main predator of the prairie dog, making it the first ever animal on the endangered species list to be cloned. For 15 points, can you identify this mammal that is designed to hunt and eat prairie dogs? Okay, we we'll take a moment to discuss. Victoria, um, do you think it's a pocket weasel? It looks like a meerkat to me. Uh, Victoria, do you agree with you or just agree with Anna? I feel like it's either a weasel or a meerkat. Okay. You got weasel or meerkat. You're getting close. It's a ferret. It's a ferret, a black footed ferret. A lot of kids have ferrets as pets, but this one was hunted because so many farmers didn't like it out there because those prairie dog holes, their cattle or feet were getting in there and they were being hobbled. So it is a, it's a nice comeback for an endangered animal. Here's your 25 point question. Like its Australian cousins, the possum, North America's only marsupial, keeps its babies, which are called these, in a pouch. Joey? I think it's a joey. It is a joey. That's right. Baby kangaroos are joeys. Baby possums are joeys. Baby wombats are joeys. Even Tasmanian devils, they're all marsupials. Good, 25 points. Thank you, Anna. Let's go to the body systems. Questions. Whenever you go into a building now, they come at you with a thermometer, a temporal infrared thermometer. They aim it at your forehead, and they want to check to see if you are running a what? A fever. A yeah, one more time. Beaver. Beaver, that's right. They want to see if your temperature is above 103.5, which indicates you are running a fever and possibly infected with the uh, coronavirus. Nicely done for 15 points in body systems. In the opening credits of the new television comedy called Be Positive, an animated heart sings through a mouth, as do these two renal organs. Okay, we'll take a moment to discuss. Victoria, what do you think? Renal is R-E-N-A-L. What two renal organs are singing along with the heart? Kidneys. Say it again. Kidneys. Kidneys is right. Yes, those are the two renal organs. Excellent work. Let's go to 25 points in body systems. The last one before we take our first break. All right, it has multiple answers. We human beings are mostly water, which means H2O, where makes a lot of hydrogen and oxygen make us up. There are four other chemical elements, along with hydrogen and oxygen, that make up our bodies. And there's a mnemonic device to help you remember. It's called schnapps. C-H, Soma, listen to me, C-H-N-O-P-P-S. C -H -N -O -P 
PS. So in addition to H and O, what does the C, the N, the P, and the S stand for? What are those four chemicals that start with the C? Okay, um, and what do you think? I think, I think it's maybe carbon. carbon. We got carbon. What about N? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. How about P? Potassium. Is it potassium? Let's try the S. Do you guys think it's sodium? I don't, I don't think so. so. Maybe it could be some sort of acid or something? You guys were going real well. You got the C and the N, the carbon and the nitrogen. The P is phosphorus and the S is sulfur. Phosphorus and sulfur. Tough question, but boy, you got most of those questions right in the first round, so you are now at 115 points. You're sitting pretty. Keep it going. We'll talk to you in a few moments and ask you your last nine questions. Good work. It is now time to meet that wonderful team from Hyattsville Elementary School. Would you please say hello to their captain, Arlo. Arlo, give a nice wave to everybody out there in TV land. Thank you. Good to have you back. Hey, Ellie, give a nice wave to everybody. Nice to have you back, too. And Samuel, last but not least. Give us a thumbs up or a wave. That's the way to do it, young man. All right. Okay, we have nine questions for you in this first half of the round. Uh, if you're ready, let's go to the green things questions. You get a five, a 15, and a 25. Here's the five-pointer. Mowgli, Bagheera, and Ka lived in this green place that is the title of the book and movie that made them famous. Um, jungle. Jungle Book. Was right, Ellie, the Jungle Book. Jungle. Mowgli, Bagheera the Bear, and Ka the Snake. For 15 points, it's a multiple choice question. Listen carefully. Sauerkraut is made from cabbage that has undergone this F initial process started by yeast. Is it fermentation? Fermentation. It is. You so you don't even need my choices. It's not fracking or fertilization. It is indeed no, fertilization. No, it's fertilization. Thank you. You got it. It's yeah. not fracking. Fermentation. YouTube. You were way ahead of me, guys. Okay. Fermentation. YouTube. <laughs> I, knew I knew that the most you said it was yeasting. Let's do the 25-point question in green things. It's a visual. Let's have a look. Here's the picture. Pine cones, like seashells, have what same shape? as the DNA molecule? Uh, uh, DNA or double helix, right? It is the double helix, absolutely right. Those two spiral staircases twisted around each other. Thank you, Sam. Let's go to the zoo. You know, in order to maintain your balance and not slip on winter's icy surfaces, the suggestion is that you walk like one of these flightless Antarctic birds. Penguin. 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 What, is, what a penguin? is a penguin? Do the penguin walk, and maybe you won't fall. Because they don't fall. For 15 points in the zoo, multiple choice. The world's smallest amphibian, the pygmy gecko, has skin that is hydrophobic, which means it repels water, it, it, absorbs water, or contains a poison to thwart predators. It, it repels water. That's how you're filled. Oh, yeah. It repels, repels water. water. Means it repels water. Absolutely right. Let's go to the zoo for 25. Again, a multiple choice question. No, it is not. It is not multiple choice. Chameleons can change the color of their skin to express emotions, like if they're angry, to camouflage themselves. And when they darken themselves, it helps them to regulate what? An important factor if you're a reptile. Heat. 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 Absolutely right. They can absorb that sunlight and regulate their temperature because they are porkelotherms. They're cold-blooded. Let's go to the body system. Three, three questions before you take your first break. All kinds of things can happen to us, can happen to us humans. You can break your bones. You can puncture your eardrum. You can scrape your knee. And especially in winter, you can chap your what? Lips. 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 That's right. You got chapped lips. That's what lipsticks or those lip balms are all about. 
for, 20, for 15 points. Bruises on your skin often turn black and blue because blood collects under the skin when these smallest blood vessels have been broken. Um, do you have any ideas? Sam, did you say something? No, but I'm thinking of the smallest things in the body. And I feel about, like, I think, like, sesame bone. The smallest but blood But I know vessels. that's not the smallest blood. And, you know, when you get a bloody nose, they break through. They're called capillaries. Capillaries. Capillary. You got arteries, veins, and then capillaries are the smallest. Here's the 25-point question, last one in the opening round for you. When they don't feel anything after getting vaccinated against COVID-19, people go for the vaccination and they don't get a fever, nothing hurts. They wonder, did I even get it? So what they do is they go get tested to see if any of these, any of their, these immune system fighters are actually being produced by the vaccine. Um, do we get what, white blood cells? What are the immune system fighters that are actually being produced by the vaccine that some people doubt whether white, white, they are in there? White blood cells? Ellie, say what you said. White blood cells? Mm, not quite. They're the, uh... The the like, like, once, once they, they fight, fight the vaccine, what? Which, is, which is a small amount of COVID. They, they have, have, like, a, a resistance, resistance against it. Because they've, they've already fought it. it. Why? Because, because they, they know how, how it works. <laughs> well, Ellie, you were close. We're looking for antibodies. 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 Antibodies is what that the, the vaccine is helping to start to produce that... Uh, Sometimes you don't feel them, but they are in there. All right, you end that first run, Hyattsville, with a wonderful score of 145 points, and you are doing extremely well. It is now time to meet the team here from Beacon Heights. And Sulma, uh, you know, we were talking to you before about some of your plans and what you want to do when you get older. What do you like to do in your spare time? If you're not sitting in front of a, a laptop like now, what do you like to do? Uh, I like to play some video games with my brothers and my teacher. Yeah, yeah, video game. You know, where would we be without video game? Where would we be without those things during this pandemic? You know, with Netflix and Hulu and video game. Somehow we were able to fill all those hours when we couldn't go outside. Uh, what do you like about this game? Uh, I like how it's competitive and how you have to ask questions for us to improve our science skills. That's actually another question. Absolutely right. Yeah, competition is important. Knowing the science question answers are correct, but sportsmanship is important. What you're showing, and poise, just sitting there, you know, and being on camera. You can't be slouching. You can't be yawning. You can't be scratching yourself. You got to sit there and you got to be attentive. Nice to have you back here. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go to Victoria. Hey, Victoria. Victoria, you have plenty of science skills and you're a, a very good sport. You have a lot of poise. What do you think you might want to do someday? Uh, yeah, we were talking about that before. And, and I'll ask you what I ask your team captain. What, what do you do in your spare time? How have you gotten through the pandemic? I like to watch videos. Yeah, I like to watch videos. Yeah, some of those vid YouTube videos. Oh, my goodness. You can watch anything on YouTube, it seems. You know, everybody seems to want to be on YouTube as well. You're such a good player. And Anna, Anna, come on back up here. Anna, I know you, you, you uh, are a little bit nervous about doing all this, but you shouldn't be because I like how you take your time, you think about the question, you ask me to repeat it so you know exactly what it is we want of you. Uh, that's the mark of a really good student, which you are. Uh, you haven't decided on a career, but I think you told me before you wanted to be a doctor of some kind. Is that correct? Can I just read the question? I'm lagging a little bit. Okay, okay. And honey, if you can just, if, this, if it's possible, just to uh, tip your screen down a little bit, because all I'm seeing you is from your nose up. And we want to see as much of you as we can. There we go. That's a little better, a little better. Good. Nice to have you here. And uh, all right, let's get back into the game here. We have three more categories. Let's get physical, potpourri, dateline, science, nine questions. Let's give it your all. Keep playing like you've been playing. Here's let's get physical for five points. 
The so-called MOXIE experiment, M-O-X-I-E, aboard the latest Mars rover known as Perseverance, will attempt to convert this gas, which we exhale, into what gas that we inhale. I need two gases. What gas do we exhale? And then which one do we inhale? They're trying to okay. convert the first one into the second one on Mars. We inhale carbon dioxide and we exhale oxygen. Absolutely right. CO2 goes in, oxygen comes out. Anna, thank you very much for 15 points. One of the most powerful of all microscopes is named for this negative subatomic particle. Okay, um, Victoria, what do you think? Victoria, you Security. had a, a suggestion. Go ahead. Um, um, the mm, I can't Can you please repeat that again? Are you unmuted? Okay. Not quite. Anna, did you have an idea? No, not really. Okay. Uh, the atomic particles, you know, inside the nucleus of an atom, you've got the proton and the neutron. And spinning around the outside, like planets around the sun, is the electron. It's called an electron microscope. Let's try the 25-point question. You know, there are laws on the books that we have to obey, and then there are laws in science that actually accurately predict events that are going to take place, like Newton's laws of motion. Well, who is that famous Greek who came up with the law of displacement of water, who jumped into his bathtub, saw that all the water sloshed out, jumped up naked, and ran through the streets of Athens saying, Eureka! Who was that famous Greek? Uh, and what do you think? Archimedes? It was Archimedes, absolutely right. I guess he wasn't embarrassed, he was so excited. You know, running out with no clothes, no bathrobe, nothing. Good answer. Let's go to Potpourri for five points. There is an 11 second delay for signals from the Mars Perseverance rover to reach Earth. Even though those signals are traveling at the speed of this, which is 186,000 miles per second. Speed of light. Speed of light, absolutely right, good answer. For 15 points, your answer is going to be a rhyme, Soma. Your answer is going to be a rhyme, Victoria and Anna. There was an entertainer by the name of James Brown. And for years, he was introduced to audiences by an announcer who said, Mr. Brown will make your liver quiver. This man will make your bladder splatter. This man will freeze your what? Ovary. Say it again. Ovary. Not ovaries. No. <laughs> Saliva. That's right. He will freeze your. Saliva. No. He'll freeze your knees. Yes, yes. We we were going to give you credit. We're going to give you credit for ovaries because uh, freeze and ovaries uh, rhymes. But he did say freeze your knees. Yeah, you're going to get those points. Get yourself 15 points. All right, for 25 points. You may have seen this commercial on television. A man pulls up to his house, he steps out, and he goes, oh my gosh. He turns around and looks at the car, and there on the roof is a bowl, a goldfish bowl with a goldfish inside. He had driven all the way home with that bowl up there, and it hadn't fallen off. Oh, he is so relieved. That shows an example of what I initialed quality that indicates a body at rest stays at rest unless acted on by a stronger outside force. Okay, and what do you think? Begins with the letter um, I. I'm not very sure. I, I forgot this one. Okay, Victor, what do you think? Um, the um, the I know when I say the word, you'll just say, oh, I think I've heard that one before. It's called inertia. Inertia, when something doesn't move. It just wants to sit there, but only a strong force will overcome that, that tendency to stay in place. Three more questions for you. Here's the date line for five points. It's a visual. 
This made everybody around the world sit up and take notice. This is the surface of Mars, and that is a helicopter called Ingenuity, and it was able to fly. The first time ever they had something fly on the planet. They didn't know if the atmosphere would let, it, let that happen. The Ingenuity helicopter that successfully flew on Mars, the first ever such flight on that planet, was like these two brothers making the first successful flight on this planet in 1903 at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Okay, Al. Who were those two brothers? The Wright brothers, maybe? Yes, indeed. It was the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur Wright. Absolutely right. Good, good answer for 15 points in Dateline. Back in 1930, long before you were born, long before I was born, over 4,500 people broke down the doors of the American Museum of Natural History in New York and started attacking each other because they all wanted a seat because they wanted to hear this scientist explain his theory of general relativity. Okay. Say it again. Can you please repeat the question? Yes, over 4,500 people in 1930 broke down the doors of a museum in New York, the American Museum of Natural History, and they even attacked each other because they were all trying to get the seats. They wanted to hear this scientist explain his theory of general relativity. Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein is I think it's Victoria. fundamental. Thank you very much. All right, last question of the game. It's a multiple choice. No, it's not a multiple choice, I'm sorry. The Perseverance rover on Mars, we've been referring to that, has been drilling the soil of an ancient lake bed on Mars where they think in that dirt might be signs of microbes, living things that once were there. They're looking not just in the lake bed, but this O, excuse me, this D initialed area of the lake where the water spilled out and which is loaded with sediment. This de-initialed part of the lake where the water came out that is filled with sediment, this de-initialed, is also the fourth letter in the Greek alphabet after alpha, beta, and gamma. Can you tell me the name of that area? I, I, I think it's Delta. It is delta. Delta is absolutely right. The delta, like a river's delta, is where it empties into the sea, and that is very rich in, in sediment and soil. Nicely done. You got yourself those extra 25 points. Boy, did you have a great game. 210 points, Beacon Heights. You did a super, super job. Let's see if that's going to be enough. All right, it is now time to meet that wonderful team from Hyattsville Elementary School. Do we met them already? Let's find out a little bit more about them. If you hadn't seen them the last time they were on here, what a great bunch. Let's talk to Arlo, their captain. And Arlo, what do you like to do in your spare time if you're not uh, sitting here doing this, looking at a laptop? Um, I read books, play, play Dungeons and Dragons, which, which is a role-playing game. Mm -hmm. And I play, play Pokemon video games. That sounds great. You're filling your time up, and you know, we've had a lot of time during this pandemic. I like your shirt there, too. It says Hyattsville, and what else does it say there? Lion Cubs. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now, are you? did you all get these shirts? Is that part of your school uniform? Um, we got them. Science. Science Bowl got them. All right. Well, I, I have Jerry, one, too. Uh, Dana, uh, uh, Danga is very nice. I think he had one on, too. All right, let's find out about your, your uh, teammates there. Let's go to Ellie. Hey, Ellie. Ellie, did, you, did they give you a T-shirt, too? Yeah. yeah, I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it, too. All right. I, I love those T-shirts. They look really good. Ellie, what have you been doing to keep yourself occupied during the pandemic? Um, uh, play, out play outside and uh, play, play with my brother. And read books. Read books. Yeah. Did you tell me that you have some pets? Bunnies. Yeah, rabbits, right? Two rabbits? How long have you had them? I think three years. Wow, wow. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. Well, they're lucky to have you as a custodian there. I'm sure you take care of them very well. And the last member of your team, uh, let's see, and we've got uh, with us um, Sam. 
Hey, Sam. Sam, you told me that you were chosen by the coach to be on this team. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't have known about it. We're really glad he made that decision. Are you happy you're Actually, doing this? Actually, I did know about the sounds. Okay. Are you happy? One of my here? friends was in it like a year ago. Okay. Okay. Well, you're doing a nice job. Does your school go up to sixth grade or just five? Fifth. Fifth, Fifth grade. What do you do in your spare time, Sam? So much stuff. Lots of stuff. That yeah. involves the recent harvesting of a lot of bamboo. I mean, like a lot of bamboo. <laughs> Wait, whatever gets us through these days. Yeah, because they've been long. Let's hope all this ends soon. All right, we've been through the green things, the zoo parade questions, and the body system questions. Here are the let's get physical, the potpourri, and the date lines. Okay, Heisville, for five points and let's get physical. In the early days of travel, energy was provided to railroad engines and river boats by this that you get when water boils. Steam. Steam is correct. Steam engines. Steamboats is correct. Five points. Excellent. For 15 points, two-part answer for me, please. You're at Ocean City on vacation, and you have built the best sandcastle you've ever built. A few hours later, you come back. It's all washed away. What just happened? And who or what? what? Let me finish. What just happened? And who or what is responsible? Uh, tides and the moon are responsible. Sam got it. Wash it off. came in, and the tides are caused by the gravitation, gravitational attraction of the moon. Thank you. Moon. Let's look at a picture for 25 points in Let's Get Physical. Have a look at this. You probably won't find one in your kitchen unless you have antiques. This vintage egg beater is named for Archimedes. It's the Archimedes egg beater because it resembles what simple machine promoted by Archimedes that is really a kind of inclined plane? Inclined plane machine. Egg beater. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. A screw. A screw is a kind of inclined plane, inclined and that plane is what machine. that egg beater looks like. Let's go to potpourri. Robins for five points. Those familiar red-breasted birds that used to herald the arrival of spring are no longer doing what, since abundant food is letting them stay here year-round? Migration. Um, migration. Migration is right. You're all on that and, one. And the cardinals. They don't migrate. Okay, okay. Five points. For 15 points. Mars has a longer day than here on Earth. Its year is longer, too, since its journey around the sun takes longer. And because Mars tilts on its axis like Earth does, these four time periods are longer, too. The, se the seasons. The seasons is right. Yes. Seasons. 25 points. X and Y are used to identify the vertical and horizontal axes on a graph. They are the two models of the all-electric Tesla cars. And X and Y are most famously these, part of each one of our genomes. X and Y are two different kinds of what? Genomes? Wait, what did you say genomes again? X and Y are a number of, X and Y are used for a number of different things, including vertical and horizontal axes on a graph, there are the two models, the Tesla X and the Tesla Y, the all-electric cars. And probably most famously, they are part of each one of our genomes because X and Y are known as, they're two of our what? Chromosomes. You have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. If you're a woman, you have two Xs. If you're a guy, you have an X and a Y. Let's go to Dateline for five points. According to the Chinese calendar, this year, 2021, is the year of this bovine whose two-letter name has the same two letters that indicate hugs and kisses on a love note. Ox. is right. X is an O. The year of the ox. Yeah, it is the year of the ox for 15 points. While planters Mr. Peanut 
is a well-known American corporate logo. It was this African-American scientist who discovered many uses for the peanut. George, George Washington Carver. Yes, George indeed. Washington. You got him, George Washington Carver. Good answer. Last question of the game, 25-pointer. Aboard the Perseverance rover on Mars is a pair of instruments, one of which is a magnifying glass that will search for minerals that might have been affected by water. Since this will be planetary detective work, the instruments have been named for the famous detective Sherlock Holmes and the other one for this man, what W-initialed faithful companion of Sherlock Holmes? Watson. 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 It is Watson. Absolutely Watson. right. Watson. Got this 25 points. Gumshoe. Yes, Something. indeed. Thank you. Ellie, you jumped on that, as did everybody. All right. Watson gets you 25 points, which means, which means you end the game with 230 points, Hyattsville. That's a great score. Well, it was a battle of the Titans here today. We knew it would be close because both these teams had distinguished themselves so well in the first game, but only one team is headed on to the semifinal eliminations. Our final tally today is Beacon Heights 210, Hyattsville 230. So by just 20 points, Hyattsville, congratulations. You are gonna be taking on Ridgecrest. We'll be taking that on April the 21st for the chance to become a county champion. You are already champions, all of you, in my eyes and all of our viewers because of how well you did here today. Let's give everybody a nice round of applause for all that work and for spending this long day. And I hope you leave here today not just with a feeling of accomplishment, but having learned a few things as well. Uh, you made my day, and I hope you had a great time. We'll see you all next time. Until then, I'm Dave Zarin. Uh, Bye-bye, everybody. And before I sign off here, we have a couple principals out here. We have the principal of Hyattsville. Could you wave a principal from Hyattsville? The principal here from, from um, Beacon Heights is with us as well. We have some alternates up there and all of our coaches and our players. Everybody's going to be waving as we say goodbye. And as I say, I hope this is just goodbye for a short period of time. Hope to see you next time in another edition of Science Bowl. I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye.